Hi, my name is Clark Owen. I'm here to describe and tell you a little bit about Tree of Heaven. Tree of Heaven, it's a tree that can grow 20 to 30 feet. It grows in full sun or shade. Tree of Heaven likes to grow in disturbed soils, field edges, roadside banks, ray lines urban areas. It's a pretty hardy plant. It'll grow in a lot of different soil types. It's really drought tolerant, so even the driest soil it thrives in. Tree of Heaven is most identifiable by its leaves. Um, this is one leaf from a Tree of Heaven. It's a compound leaf, meaning it has lots of little leaflets. Each one of those leaflets has smooth edges on it, as opposed to having toothed edges like some of the lookalikes. Also, the bark is pretty smooth on it, and when the tree is broken, as you break a leaf off or snap a twig, it'll create a strong smell that kind of is reminiscent of a rancid peanut butter. Tree of Heaven got its name due to its quick growth habit. Um, it can, within just a few years, it can shoot above all other uh, tree seedlings to dominate uh, the sunlight. One population came over in California with some uh, Chinese gold miners. Another population was introduced in Philadelphia through a, a gardener that, would, that liked it and introduced it into a botanical garden there. And from there it has spread. Tree of Heaven can spread in two different ways. Um, the first is the mature tree through its roots can send up suckers just like this one I'm standing next to. And, it, and then it also spreads through seed. The seed are very windboard uh, seeds, kind of similar to a maple seed that uh, can be carried by the wind for miles. The timber industry is a major source of revenue for the state, and Tree of Heaven has a detrimental effect on that. It's a pretty much a worthless wood. There's no structural quality to it. Um, it has very low BTU, so it's not, it doesn't make good firewood. Um, and most pulp mills don't even accept it. So there's ec no economic value to Tree of Heaven. But also Tree of Heaven has an allopathic effect. And what I mean by that is it releases chemicals through its roots that can inhibit other vegetation from growing around it. To hack and squirt, uh, you take an ax and make several incisions all the way around the tree trunk so that they're almost touching all the way around. And then each one of those incisions, you just want to fill in with enough herbicide to fill the incision, but not let it dribble over and run down the trunk. And as you do that, that tree is going to pull that herbicide into its, into its cell vessels and pull it into the roots and up into the tree canopy. And in a few weeks, that you should be seeing signs. And within, a, hopefully, the end of the season, it should be dead. You don't want to quite girdle it, because if you girdle it, you're going to cause a, um, the plant to respond by sending out suckers. If you allow a little bit of nutrient movement up and down that trunk, the tree still thinks it's, a, it's, you know, it's alive and doing well, and it'll carry that herbicide through. So you want those hack marks just to have a little bit of gap in between them and not quite girdle it. And I think that will give you the best results with the least amount of suckering. One is just uh, what I saw another uh, field crew do. They were, uh, they were treating power lines um, to keep the power lines clear of vegetation. And they came in and mowed down. Um, it was probably at the time, this was last year, probably 15, 16 tree of heaven. And when I visited that site back again this year, there is now probably several hundred tree of heaven. And that's, you know, just a, such a visual, striking, uh, picture to me just to see what happens when you just cut cut down a bunch of trees and the response that those tree of heaven has to keep surviving is to send up these numerous sprouts that just take over it's it looks like a jungle now this one here is probably one of the biggest ones I've seen definitely I've never seen the you know, circumference of the tree of heavens actually stand this big because most of the time, ones you know that are anything closer to that, a lot of the times the, the tops of them will snap right out. With a good windstorm. 
when you get ones like this, you know, it's amazing.